Well, the buzzer, buzzer has sounded, and that means it's the end of halftime, and now we begin the third quarter here at Alcoa High School. Your score so far in tonight's ball game: Alcoa Tornadoes lead the Green Greenville Devils 27 to zero, and so far a real, really good ball game by Alcoa all the way around. Yes, it is, Heath. Defensively, they've shut down Tanner Stewart. Uh, Greenville's had possession of the ball on four occasions during the first half. They turned the ball, ball over on downs, their first possession, and the three after that, they punted back to Alcoa. Well, Alcoa just doing a really good job of making sure that they do not give Greenville a chance to come back in this ball game, but we still do have a half to play, so we'll see what happens and see what kind of adjustments both teams have made. So far, a great job tonight in the first half from Peyton Wall. Wall 7 for 7, 127 yards passing so far tonight for Alcoa. That is a really good job, especially in just in one half. Even a game, that's a really good job on that. Uh, also, Ezekiel Coco has ran for three touchdowns tonight as well. And uh, Jacques Tyson got the other touchdown for Alcoa, who continually have used the running game and done a great job with that. Well, they kicked the ball off to Alcoa to start the second half, and it'll be a touchback. Alcoa will take over at the 20-yard line. Some scores for, uh, of interest um, so far um, in the second quarter. CAK leads Gibbs 13-0 with 5-12 left in the second. Greenback with a very big lead so far as they are running away with it over Cloudland. Uh, 123 left in the second quarter, 28 to 0 Greenback. And also Lenore City has extended their lead with the 15-yard touchdown run to take a 27 to 7 lead now over Kingston with 659 left in the second. And last we heard at the end of one, William Blunt leads Heritage 7 to 0. Alcoa on their first play of the drive will pitch the ball over to the right-hand side to Ezekiel Coco. Coco finds a hole and gets a few yards on the carry. It'll now be second down for Alcoa. And it was a good run by Coco, also uh, Greenville being able to stop him. That last run Coco had, though, was about a 44-yard run, so you definitely know Greenville is going to key on him. It looked like he got probably about six yards on that play as well, so we'll see what Alcoa will do with this one. And I have received another scoring update. William Blunt has kicked a 37-yard field goal and now leads Heritage in the second quarter, 10 to zero. Peyton Wall in the backfield and shotgun, hands the ball off to Gerard Crenshaw. Crenshaw over the left-hand side and a good job defensively by the Devils. It was, um, looks like Crenshaw got a few extra yards and actually was falling backwards on the play and got another probably three yards, four yards on that play, which is going to make it third down and one here, but Greenville tightening up a little bit on that run right there. That was a good tackle right there, right there excuse me, from number 43, Michael Lane, the 5'8 senior linebacker for the Devils. Now third and short, and Alcoa in the Maryland formation. They will hand the ball up to Tyson. Tyson will find a hole, and Tyson has room to run. Tyson to the 50, Tyson to the 40. Tyson makes a defender miss and tries to slow down his steps a little bit and, and get the guy to pass him, but he, he ends, ends up stepping out of bounds. But a great run by the sophomore running back. Yes, it was. He got through the hole, and there was nothing. Greenville had packed the line trying to stop Alcoa running up the middle, knowing that Maryland uh, formation that with Tyson then run up the middle a couple of plays. Tyson broke it off the tackle over there and got a huge run on that. Looked like he was going to try a stutter step with the defender and knocked him a little off bounds, and he stepped out of bounds at the 35. And it may have seemed like for some, uh, Tyson was starting to showboat as he was going down the field. But what he was doing is trying to kind of slow up his steps and get the get the defender to to come with his full momentum and able to pass him. But unfortunately, he was unable to do so. But still, a big run. And now another big run. This time by the quarterback, Peyton Wall gets around the outside, miss it, breaks a few tackles, and Peyton Wall with another first down. And Alcoa is moving the football very quickly on this drive. Yes, they are. And that was about a 21-yard run for a while right there. He could have broken a few more tackles and they were able, Greenville was able to wrap him up a little bit and at least drag him out of bounds. Well now two running backs in the backfield, one to the left and one to the right. 
of Wall. Wall will try to run it again, and he will go nowhere. A great job that time by the Devils, and unfortunately, one of the running backs in the backfield, number 74 for Alcoa, was unable to make a make a key block as they had him leading as a fullback. He's one of the uh, backup linemen for Alcoa. That is number 74, Thomas Loy, the six-foot senior offensive lineman, missed a block and they were able to get in, get there and stop Peyton Wall quickly. They were, and again, like I said, Greenville looks like they've made a few changes, are pulling in a little bit tighter on the defensive side here. And this time, Wall turns and pitches it to Coco, and Coco gets a few yards before he's tripped. And it'll now be third down. Greenville had stacked the uh, left side of their defense on that play, Heath, and looked like they were just waiting on Coco to come around that side. So they were able to get a few bodies down there and at least trip him up, keep him from getting a big yardage. Looks like now it's about a third and two around the 11-yard line. No six left in the third quarter as this clock is starting to tick away, but still Alcoa has not spent much time on this drive. And this time they're able to capitalize on a penalty as they get the Devils to jump off sides, and that'll give Alcoa a fresh set of downs and very close to the end zone. Yeah, so it looked like a hard count and caused about three or four of the um, Green Devil players to jump forward on the line and actually just gave Alcoa a first and goal here. They moved it to the, looks like, around the two yard, three yard line, Heath. They'll hand the ball up to Coco up the middle and Coco will grind it out and get a, get a couple, but he has stopped before he gets to the end zone. It looks like it'll be second and one for Alcoa. And I see Jacquez Tyson coming back in. They're a powerful running back tailback that looks like they're probably going to go back to that Maryland formation and just let um, Tyson run it in, just power his way in as he usually does. They hand the ball up the middle to Tyson and Tyson will produce and get his second touchdown of the ball game and that will only extend Alcoa's lead here in the third quarter. Again, an excellent run by Jarquez to be able to power his way into there. And that's what Alcoa seems to do when they get inside that five-yard line. They just give it to Tyson on that. When they want someone to power it just through, they let the first two running backs clear him a good path along with a good offensive line that they have. And Jarquez just uses his strength to get the rest of the way in. Well, very big and punishing back is Tyson. Not as big as his cousin who, who played here for Alcoa, Teheran Tyson, but they say he's a little smaller, but he's also a little quicker. Yes, and give him a couple more years, and he's going to be about as big as uh, Teheran and probably even as good or better than Teheran was, and Teheran was a great running back. He certainly was, and now he is in his sophomore season with uh, UTC and again congratulations to a lot of these Alcoa players who have went on to play at many colleges and have done uh, very very well as as many know the great Randall Cobb now playing in the NFL for the Green Bay Packers and he's a uh, he, he's done well so far and I think he's got a lot of room to grow and we're all prou proud of him and, uh, and all the others as well. Yes and Randall has been a good inspiration for these Alcoa players and good motivation as well to show them with some hard work and to get out here and play as hard as you can and do the things that Coach Rankin teaches you to do and these great coaches at Alcoa here that there is a place for you to go to move forward and to continue on and look at the rewards as uh, Randall has gotten to getting to play in the NFL with the Packers. It looks like Alcoa would like to get the score looking more uh, back to normal as they had missed an extra point earlier. So it looks like they will go for two this time uh, with 8.15 left in the third. Turbyfield fakes the handoff. He takes it himself. And Turbyfield in the end zone. Two-point conversion. Good. Able to slip off a defender and get into the end zone. And now your score, 35-0, Alcoa. 
And again, Alcoa is just taking control. Well, after last year's game that uh, Greenville just really smacked them in the mouth pretty hard and kind of set the tone for Alcoa's season as the struggles they had last year. And now this year they're trying to let people know and especially sending a message down towards West Knoxville let CAK know as well that, hey, we're for real this year and we're coming after you. Well, a score update. Gibbs is able to get on the board at halftime. Your score, CAK 20, Gibbs 7. Sounds like a good game going on right there. Gibbs has got a good team, and CAK with uh, their quarterback, Charlie High, um, able to move that CAK team around. So well, I'm definitely looking forward towards the end of the year here with Alcoa and CAK, see how this game plays out. Well, Cloudland finally forces Greenback to a, for a three and out, their first of the ball game, but unfortunately they do that right at the end of the second quarter. So now your score at the half, Greenback 41, Cloudland 0. Greenback's got a really good team, and they continue to just progress more and more in that division and in that district. Just watch for them around the playoff time. Well, Greenville gets the ball on the kickoff, and... Returning the ball for Greenville is number two, Hayes Colbreth. And Colbreth gets over to around the 32-yard line, and that is where Greenville will take over. Some of the players looking for a late hit penalty as the whistle is blown and he goes out of bounds. And then the defender threw him down, but they're not throwing a flag. So it looks like there will be no penalty, and it is now first and ten for Greenville. Yes, Heath, I looked for one as well as Coco was wrestling him out of bounds, and then as they were, as they had reached out of bounds, he was pulling him down. Kind of in the opinion, it looks like of the referee that that was a part of the play. He was still bringing him down. They just came down um, just on the out of bounds side, so the referees felt that that was okay. Well, Stewart back in the shotgun formation. He will fake the handoff and take it himself. Has a little room, but it's quickly closed up Alcoa. He tries to get a few more. They strip the ball and get a fumble. And Alcoa will return it for a touchdown. The ball stripped, and the ball is recovered by number 57 of Alcoa. A great play that time by Braylon Young. Young gets the ball, sees that he's, gonna be, he's going to be brought down. He turns and pulls a Randy Moss and turns and dishes it back that Dean time to that Kenny one. Dean and a great job by the Alcoa defense and an excellent smart play that time by Braylon Young. Yes, it was. Number 74 with Alcoa. Um, looked like the line had held up Stewart. Stewart came off the field looking like he was shaking up some because it looked like they were holding him up and really fighting with him and just ended up with a few stronger players able to rip the ball out of his hand. And again, an excellent play by Alcoa defenders to be able to take the ball down the field and that uh, lineman seeing that he was probably going to get taken down, flipping it over to Dean and letting the faster runner go ahead and take it in. Well, uh, again, as you mentioned, a great job that time and a very selfless play by Young, not trying to be the hero. He had already got the fumble and just dishing it back because he knew, he knew he wasn't going to be able to make it. And a great job by Dean as Alcoa extends their lead now with 7.08 left in the third. Alcoa 42, Greenville 0. And this has been a really quick strike Alcoa team here in the second half as only 7.08 left in the third quarter and we're already up by 42. Um, looks like once that this kickoff gets started and Greenville gets their offense started, they'll probably go into the run, uh, the continuous clock, Heath, as well. Alcoa back to kick the ball off again and back to receive is number two of Greenville, Hayes Colbreth, and Colbreth returns it again. This time he won't get as far as he did last time. will be brought down to the 20-yard yard line, and Greenville will try it again on offense, and there's a flag on the play. Yes, I didn't see what actually had happened on that, but um, it looks like there's a little bit of jawing between the Greenville Number 17 there and one of the Alcoa players. I'm not sure which one the referee caught on that play. It's like a per, uh, personal foul. They're counted on Alcoa. The uh, 
kickoff return was a 20-yard return. It looks like they're going to tack on 15 to that. So, again, Greenville's going to get good position right around the 35, Heath. Well, Greenville with a big um, a, a, a big chance right here for them. They really need to get the ball down the field, and they really need to get the into the end zone if they want to try to stage a comeback right now. Oh, there Looks like Stewart's coming back in. I was wondering when I saw he was out after he had gotten shaken up that last last play for Greenville. Well, Stewart back in at quarterback and two running backs in the backfield. To his right is number 25, Xavier Good, and to his left, Quan Wilson. He turns and fires the ball over to the edge to Hayes Colbert, and Colbert is blasted by Mustafa Anthony, and they will lose some yards on the play. Well, actually, Heath, he dropped the football. Looks like the referee came in late. Uh, indicating an incomplete pass. That was a very solid hit, and by the time the ball got there and he had just gotten it into his hands, the Alcoa player laid a strong lick on him right there. Well, this Alcoa defense has been very feisty and fired up tonight and ready to play, and they have done a good job of bottling up a very potent offense. Stewart drops back, pump fakes, looks for the receiver and fires it down the field. And incomplete and almost intercepted that time, but Mustafa Anthony pass was intended for Trevor Wright, and it'll now be third down. And Mustafa got excellent position on that ball as well. Got himself in front of it. It almost looked like he was going to come down with a one-handed catch. Mustafa Anthony, a very talented athlete as we see him play safety for the defense, but he also gets some reps on for Alcoa, a wide receiver, and also at running back as well as they let him come in on a few plays and do some motions and hand the ball off here and there, but also an excellent receiver when they need him to be for Alcoa, and just a great job of having an athlete who can play both ways and give them a lot of, a lot of speed on both sides of the football. Oh, yes, and the way Alcoa's been playing lately, giving their – um, reserves a lot of playing time as well in the fourth quarter. It's been able to keep the starting unit from wearing out by midseason and allowing them to continue to stay fresh as the season continues onward. Well, this Alcoa defense is not allowing anything, and you have to wonder, seeing the way they're playing tonight, where was this running defense against Maryville? Because they have definitely improved stopping the running game, and I'm sure that that's something they've been focusing on, but they have improved so much and, and, and vastly improved from that Maryville game. Oh, yes, definitely. And, of course, the Maryville game, and it was, again, on both sides playing. It was a hot Sunday afternoon, and, just whichever team could hang in there, but um, Alcoa actually stayed in the Maryville game until the last fourth quarter and started making a couple of errors, and it came back to haunt them on that. But uh, Alcoa is definitely showing they are for real this year. Well, Greenville is back to punt again, and back to punt for Greenville will be Trey Clark. Punts it in a nice punt, and it'll go out of bounds at the 37-yard line, and Alcoa will get another chance on offense. And Alcoa has added a few of their backup players into the ball game so far, but they're still running with a lot of their first team offense in the game now for Alcoa's number 25, Caleb Birchfield, who is now added, who is another running back who can also do some things at the wide receiver um, stance as well. But now they have two running backs in the backfield, Birchfield at the fullback position, and Tyson at running back. But they'll hand it off to Birchfield up the middle, and Birchfield will find a hole, and Birchfield will get the first down and then some. It was a great run right there by Birchfield. Heath cutting off the tackle there. Looks like he got about 17 yards on that play and definitely is again wearing this Greenville defense down because they're just continually running through the holes on him here. As this clock runs, now we are under three minutes to play in the third quarter. Your score, Alcoa 42, Greenville 0. Hand the ball up, up the middle to Tyson. Tyson jukes, jives, and he will get close to another first down and a good run from Tyson as he is finding his way through the holes tonight. 
a good run by Tyson. Also, I've noticed, and we just kind of watched this throughout the game as well, too. They're really enforcing that helmet rule. I noticed number 75 for Greenville. His helmet came off, and the referee was right on it, exiting him out. I think that's an excellent rule. Trying to get these young men to understand to keep that helmet strapped tightly. They'll hand the ball up the middle to Birchfield this time, and Birchfield with a few, a few yards on the carry. It'll now be second down for Alcoa. And you're right, a, a definitely a really good rule, and you're seeing it implemented on the high school level and on the college level, as we're seeing that as well in many ball games so far this season. Um, a lot of players tend to like to wear their their chin straps a little loose. I guess it gives them a little bit more breathing room or something. But it's it's better for everyone if they keep it on tight, and that'll that'll not only save them but say to help many others in preventing injuries um, each and every year. But Tyson with the handoff this time as they pitch it around to Tyson. And Tyson will get past the chains, I believe, and get himself another first down for Alcoa as this clock is winding down the third quarter. Right. They're just using the power game, just letting Tyson run up the middle. Again, he gets up to about the 21, gives Alcoa another first down here. And looks like with under a minute 20, Alcoa continuing to drive down the field. Wall with the handoff and up the middle to Birchfield. Birchfield will be stopped at the line and maybe will gain one on the play. A good job defensively that time from the front line of the Devils. And Alcoa's front line is continuing just to push. I'm watching and they're still even during the play and the run, running backs are getting through there. They're continuing to stay on their blocks and making sure that their man is not going to be the one involved in that tackle. Well now second and eight for Alcoa. Wall brings his team up to the line, and he will be in the shotgun now with Birdfield to his left. Mustafa Anthony and Jacquez Tyson out at receiver to the left-hand side. He'll fake the handoff, and he'll keep it himself. He'll go up the middle, and it will get a few more yards and a good run from Wall. Yes, it was, and it looked like Alcoa brought in a tighter package, as I noticed number 92. Enrique Harvey came in in the tight end position for Alcoa. It looks like he's going to remain in, so they're going to probably keep a kind of a power set here. But looks like the clock's running down on us here in the third quarter. Heath. You're right. They're going to let it run and let it go to the fourth quarter. Your score after three, Alcoa 42, Greenville 0. It looks like that's how it's going to be as they're discussing with the coaches for Alcoa now and going to be setting up for the kickoff. Well, Wallace, uh, a pretty good kicker for this Alcoa ball club, but he has had some issues off and on with extra points. We saw him, I believe, miss one two weeks ago as well. So uh, something maybe for him to work on. This is his first year kicking for the, f the, the football team, but he is a very good uh, player. He's a really good soccer player and wanted to come out and help the Tornadoes. And so I'm sure they're thankful for that and for having his leg, but definitely want to right the ship and fix those extra points, and that will be something he needs to, needs to work on going forward. Most definitely, Heath, because that, that will – come into play at some point in time again this season, so it's important that we do get those extra points in on that. Well, a good kick that time by Burnett. It'll go out of the end zone, and that'll be a touchback, and Greenville will now take the ball over for their second offensive drive of the ball game. Please meet Mr. Adler on the practice field. All members of the alumni band that are performing, please meet Mr. Adler on the practice field. Stewart fakes the handoff and decides to keep it himself, goes around the right end, and he will be stopped by the Tornadoes as they were ready and waiting for Stewart. That definitely looked the case, Heath, as Alcoa sniffed that out very fast. When he came around the end, all he found was a host of Tornadoes waiting on him, and they just drove him back. Looked like he had a loss of about a yard and a half, two yards on that play. 
So it'll now be second and 12 for Greenville. Stewart in the shotgun formation. To his left will be number 25 of Greenville, Xavier Good. And again, Alcoa, an excellent play all over the um, running back on that play as the running back tried to make a dive up the middle and quickly stopped. Well, now third down for the Devils, third and 12. Greenville trying to switch some things up here, tried to get a motion going last play and fake it to Trevor Wright and then hand it off up the middle to Xavier Good, but Alcoa was able to read that and make the right adjustments defensively. This time Stewart drops back to make the throw, sees nothing, decides to keep it, finds a hole, but it quickly closes as he is taken down after a few yards by Jordan Ferguson. Yes, that was an excellent play. Looked like he didn't see anything downfield, wanted to take it up the field, and Ferguson was all over him quickly, and that goes with part of that outside speed that Alcoa has. Again, Stewart's a really good player, and for Alcoa to be on him that fast, that is an excellent play by Ferguson. Well, that'll force Greenville to punt. Back to receive for Alcoa, number 23, Malik Love, and number five, Kenny Dean. And the punt will be short. It looks like they're just going to let it roll. It'll take a Greenville bounce, bounce over the 50, and get over to the 47-yard line. And that is where Alcoa will begin. That was a good kick. Another thing I noticed on that, too, and just something that Alcoa may want to keep an eye on as well, is Stewart is the up back on that punt. And watch for Greenville any kind of trickery later for Alcoa. They may want to keep an eye on that. but. Uh, looks like a good time now for Alcoa to drive and get some more points on here and kind of help try to take control of this game. But Greenville, I'm sure, is going to toughen up their defense and be really ready to hold Alcoa at this point. Well, Alcoa with two backs in the backfield. Gerard Crenshaw at fullback. And Jacquez Tyson at running back. They will fake the handoff. And Wall will roll around to the left-hand side. Fire it down the field to Ferguson, who catches it and barely miss, misses getting drilled by number one, Trevor Wright. And Jordan Ferguson with a nice run, and he will get a first down and a great play by the Tornado offense. Uh, that was a beautiful play by Ferguson there on that catch. And the way to look that ball in, knowing that he's fixing to just get slammed by number one from Greenville and just dodges a bullet right in there and then tippy toes down the sideline until his momentum finally carried him out at the 25 yard line but an excellent excellent play by ferguson on that well now first and 10 ball in the 25 yard line for alcoa peyton wall gets his team up to the line quickly and gets under center he will send Coco out in motion to the right now, and Peyton will drop back, hand the ball off on, around the end on a, on a trick play to Malik Love, and Love will get a few yards on the play, but it's always nice to see a little wrinkle in the offense. It keeps the defense guessing and, and shows that they have a, a multitude of things that they can do. Yes, it was. Greenville did an excellent play on the defense. The linebacker stayed and held his position and waited, and the cornerback came up as well to help on the play. Otherwise, it looked like that he would have been able to get a whole lot more yardage, but give Greenville a lot of um, Pats on the back of whether a guy knew his assignment, knew how to stay where he was supposed to be, and just waited on him to come around to him. Second and eight now for Alcoa. Wall back in the shotgun with Crenshaw to his left. Two receivers to the left and two to the right as well. Wall will draw back and roll out to the left-hand side. Fires it to Malik Love, who's open. Gets down the field and finally will be taken down at the 14-yard line. And that will be should be a first down for Alcoa. They are checking it out. The referee signals first down Alcoa. So it's like 801 left here, Heath, and Alcoa at the 14-yard line once again of Greenville. And 
driving deep and ready to head back into Greenville's green zone instead of the red zone for Greenville. <laughs> well, you're right. Only now under eight minutes left in the first quarter. Or excuse me, it should be the second quarter. It just hasn't been adjusted on the on the screen just yet. And they hand the ball up the middle to Ezekiel Coco. Coco finds the hole up the middle and will get a few yards, and it will now be second down. A good play by him. Again, Greenville trying to tighten up that defense a little bit and watch for that quick little hit on the inside, the counter play, and just going to keep Green, um, Alcoa from being able to just run up the middle on him. Well, it looks to be second and seven for Alcoa. But they see something they don't like, and Coach Rankin is not very pleased as he will call a timeout, and he will come out here and discuss some things with his offense. Well, it looked like Rankin was trying to get another player in and couldn't get him in there or get him to go in, in there. And uh, Rankin, again, like you said, wasn't real happy about it and had to call a timeout as Alcoa was waiting to run a play but didn't have the right personnel in for that play. On the practice field behind the visitors' bleachers. Well, a great game so far in tonight's ball game, and a good job so far by Alcoa of really handling handling uh, the game well so far on offense and making some uh, key drives for them. And also on def defensively, they've done a good job of making some big stops against this Devil offense. Tonight's two touchdowns from Alcoa have been courtesy of Ezekiel Coco. And Alcoa leads again with 7-10 left now in the second quarter, 13-0. Alcoa back on the field now, this time in their wildcat formation as they have Turby Field now in at quarterback with Crenshaw to the right or left. He will fake the handoff to Crenshaw, and Turby Field will take it himself. And a great job of just bulldozing the defender and getting a few more yards from Turby Field. Oh, it was Heath, and he got down. It looks like around between the two, two-and-a-half yard line there. Um, just ran over number eight for Greenville, just lowered his head, and it was just a... Just who was gonna who was gonna take who down and Turby Phil made a a good move, just pulled his way on through there and got down for they were taking him down there around the, around the two yard line. Looks like Wallace come back in. Now uh, I'll go up to the line in their Maryland formation. They will hand the ball up the middle to Tyson and Tyson Bounces off a defender, defender spins around and into the end zone. Touchdown, Alcoa. Yes, and Tyson again gets the work when any of their time they're around that two-yard line and they want to bowl their way in. Again, they just hand it to Jacquez Tyson, and he just works works his way in. Again, every last couple of weeks we've seen with um, Alcoa, whether it was Austin East, Scott County, when Alcoa was down around that two-yard line, they went back into that Maryland formation, or Maryland formation and Jacquez just drove himself in there. Good play by Jacquez. Great play that time by the running back, and Alcoa just we see time and time again, they, do, we, they, they always say that Alcoa doesn't rebuild and they reload as they have a multitude of players who can come in and do things and, and, and step up when it's time to step up as, as they are able to get some big wins during the season. They're able to put their backups in, get them that game experience so when it's time for them to be the big playmakers, they're ready to step up and fill that role. Oh yes, and Alcoa, like you said, they're always playing quality opponents and preparing themselves because the main thing is to get to the state tournament and you're not going to play any weak teams once you get to the state tournament. You're going to have to play quality opponents. And this week, Keith, in District 4 play, um, we've got CAK going to Gibbs to play there. Gibbs coming off a hard, um, hard loss against Gatlinburg Pittman last week. CAK continuing to be CAK. Kingston travels to the North City, which should be a really good game. Both are excellent teams. Again, Greenville here at Alcoa. Sweetwater is traveling tonight at Loudon. Stone Memorial heads to Sunbright. And Scott County, who Alcoa played last week, has an open date and a date with CAK next week. 
Well, two scoring updates from around high school football so far. Lenore City on a seven-play scoring drive opens the ball game and now leads Kingston 7-0 with 9.59 left in the first quarter. Another score of interest is Greenback scores on their first possession against Cloudland on two plays, 58 yards and 19 seconds. So now with 8.09 left in the first quarter there, your score, Greenback 7, Cloudland 0. Oh, uh, that's going to be a good, that is a good game right there. But I believe, if I'm correct, Heath, uh, I think Kingston had lost their quarterback just recently with an injury. So that may be slowing the Yellow Jackets down a little bit. But again, Lenore City, uh, even without their um, wide receiver that transferred to West earlier this year, they just continue to build and become an even stronger team in that district. They certainly do. Lenore City, a great football team. And, you know, Seemed to struggle some in the past, but uh, of years of late, they've really been able to improve on that ball club, and we see them get better each and every year, and they have done a great job so far this season as well. This time, Greenback hands the ball up the middle, and it will go nowhere, a loss of a yard, and it will now be second and 11. Yes, and the uh, Grand Devils continually running with Stewart. Um, again, like I said before, a really good dual threat for Greenville. Alcoa is their defense is keying on him and catching him pretty much any time he starts to leave that backfield. Well, again, last year, Stewart was the big playmaker as he ran 27 times for 180 yards and three touchdowns. So really just wore out this Alcoa defense last year. So Alcoa really trying to key on him this year. This time, Greenville up the middle again, and they will gain a few third down and long. Yes, again, Stewart, and got a couple of yards out of that, but Alcoa's front line is doing a great job in getting off their blocks and getting to the quarterback. The linebackers are maintaining their areas that they're supposed to and getting on that quarterback as soon as he starts to get that pass up. They've got a heavy rush on him, or if he starts to leave that pocket, they're all over him. Third and nine now for Greenville as Stewart is in the shotgun formation, has trips to the left. And it looks like there will be a flag on the play. I believe it will be a delay a game on Greenville. It is, and that's one of the things that you notice a lot of schools do. We saw that with Scott County as well, uh, getting the plays cut in from the sideline and waiting. Sometimes it just takes a little longer for them to get it working. I think something that would really be good, and it would be good to see at a lot of high school fields, is if they're going to make those calls and you see them have trouble a lot in high school with that uh, call by the referees, is, is to put up a score clock and to put those on the scoreboard so that way the players can keep track of it. Uh, in, in college, you see a lot of quarterbacks watching that clock as they're calling out plays and making adjustments. So I think it would be good for these high school football players to go ahead and learn and go ahead and get used to. I agree, Heath. I think that would be an excellent idea. And um, I think there are a few high schools that do that, but it's very rare to see that anywhere. Well, Stewart is dropped in the backfield as the Alcoa defense gets back there quickly and takes no time in bringing the Greenville quarterback down. Now it's fourth down, and Greenville will be forced to punt. Back to pump for the Devils is number 28, Trey Clark, a 5'10", 160-pound senior. And back to receive for Alcoa again, again is number 5, Kenny Dean, and number 23, Malik Love. Clark with the punt, and it'll roll past the 40 and, get, and will finally be downed at the 44-yard line. And Alcoa with the chance to extend this lead. Yes, they do. 325 left in the second quarter. It looks like Alcoa with their potent offense can definitely get the f ball down the field pretty quickly. Alcoa again, as you as you just mentioned, a great chance to to extend this lead before halftime with three minutes and 25 seconds left to play in the second quarter, but not very far to go for Alcoa as Alcoa has been able to get down the field very quickly in tonight's ball game. 
Alco with the ball at the 44-yard line right now with two running backs in the backfield. Paynewell drops back and then hands the ball off on a halfback draw to Ezekiel Coco. Coco with a great spin move and a great job of getting out of a defender's hold. He will get down the field and he'll be off to the races and in the end zone. Touchdown for Alcoa, and that's Ezekiel Coco's third touchdown of tonight's ball game, and we're only in the first half. Oh, yes, Heath, and that was an excellent run by Coco to be able to get out of that hold 44-yard uh, run on that play. He looked like he was going to be stopped at the line, was able to work himself out of it, had one more uh, defender to get away from, and then it was a foot race down to the side, down the sideline. And again, Alcoa's quick strike um, running game proved to be lethal right there. A great run that time by the senior running back, and now to kick is Wallace. Wallace with the extra point up. And good. So now your score with 311 left in the second quarter. Alcoa 27, Greenville 0. Right now, Heath, I'd say a lot of people are probably stunned. I know the Greenville sideline is probably stunned right now with how quick Alcoa has gotten on them. But again, as I've said before, don't count this team out because Greenville can strike fast and they can make this make this deficit up really fast there on Alcoa if Alcoa starts to relax any. So you still got to play Greenville tough and continue to work the ball down the field. Otherwise, Greenville's going to get back in this game really fast. And uh, again, Tanner Stewart is a really good quarterback, and you're going to have to watch because I'm sure Greenville is not going to fold even at this score. <clears throat> Greenville, as you said, a very good ball ball club, and I'm sure that they don't count themselves out of it, and they won't. They're going to fight, and they're a very good team, and Alcoa's going to have to stay strong, and Alcoa's going to have to, again, as we mentioned earlier, stay on the gas and keep going, because this Greenville team will not give up. The ball is kicked back and received by number two, Hayes Colbreth. Colbreth around the right side, and he is blasted at the 21-yard line by the man who laid a lick earlier in the game at running back, number three, Landon Turbyfield. Oh, yes, and that was an excellent, excellent hit. Looks like a flag has been thrown here. Um, not sure who they're going to call this on unless they call this on Alcoa for um, excessive celebration. And they're caught, looks like. Um, unsportsmanlike conduct on Alcoa. Looks like after the hit, there was a little bit too much celebration by the Alcoa um, defenders, and it's going to move Greenville up into really good field position here. Well, Greenville could really use some good field position now as Alcoa's done a really good job of bottling them up so far in tonight's ball game. So far on, our thir on 13 plays from Greenville and tonight, Alcoa has only allowed 49 total yards. So a great job uh, by the Tornado defense thus far. Some scoring updates again around the around high school football. William Blunt is up on Heritage 7-0 and Greenback has extended their lead and it now leads Cloudland 14 to nothing. Greenback's a really good team. I've seen a lot about them this year, and they're playing really tough. They're continuing to do the things that they did last year. That was a uh-oh fumble and recovered by Greenville. Number 15 for Greenville. Um, Stewart did a quick um, shuffle pass. 15. Tyler Tomlinson, a great play that time. It was. He got a pop, though, right around the 47-yard line from Alcoa. The ball popped loose, and Greenville luckily had someone in the vicinity and was able to land on it and maintain possession there. And he did take a shot as he will go over to the sidelines because he is hurting. But Greenville able to hold on to the football. It'll now be first down for the Devils. And a gr good a good um, play right there as they, they fake the handoff and then pitch it up the middle to uh, Tomlinson. And he made a great run as that hole was wide open. So now first down for Greenville at the 47. They'll send another man in motion. This time they'll give it to him. Then do a reverse to number one. But Alcoa was sitting and waiting on him. And they did not fall for that trick play. No, not at all. Number 21, Alcoa, was standing there just waiting on him when he came back around. A good move from the linebacker. And the Greenville running, or the Greenville wide receiver there on the uh, end of round basically just ran right to him. 
Yeah, they, they handed the ball off in motion that time to Hayes Colbreth. Colbreth then on the reverse hands the ball off to Trevor Wright, and he is stuffed. Alcoa was just waiting on him, and he had nowhere to go. He could have maybe tried to make a move, but you're right. It looked like he ran right into him, but a great job that time from Alcoa. Again, another big stop by Alcoa as Alcoa is just getting into the backfield at will right now. They hand the ball off to number five, Quan Wilson, and Wilson will be stopped for a loss again this time, and that will move the chains back even more. And now you have a third and 21 for Greenville. Yeah, and it looks like Greenville's just kind of stalling. They're going to have to probably go to a pass right here um, on that last play to Brendan Stressel. Stressel was the one that had made that play on that end around and just started moving Greenville back. Oh, yes. And Stewart drops back. And he does not have much time, and he will be brought down by Alcoa's number four, James Hawkins, the senior defensive end, and a great play that time from the Alcoa defense. And Alcoa, a great job that time defensively on that whole drive. It was, Hathen. Number four, um, Hawkins there, was able to get around quickly around that tackle, and um, Stewart basically had no chance whatsoever. He sat back, and before... Before anything could happen, he already had him on back there and pulling him down. So Alcoa again using that speed. Well, Greenville now to punt the football again. That'll be, I believe, their third punt of tonight's ball game. And now the clock winding down. I think they're going to let some of the clock run off. And they finally get the punt off and a good punt that time. Very nice spiral that time from the punter. And they hand it off on the reverse to Malik Love. And Malik Love will be stopped shortly after he gains a few yards. And Alcoa will take over the ball at the 23-yard line with 43 seconds left. A long way to go. You're up 27-0 to zero right now in the second quarter. You could try to extend the lead, but I imagine with Coach Rankin, he's probably going to ha hand the football off maybe once or twice, and he's going to be happy to go into the halftime with this lead. Oh, yes, yeah, so a very good lead at the moment right now. Of course, then again, Alcoa with their quick strike could get on it really fast and get down the field on that last play with that punt return and that handoff. Greenville was pretty much already on the guy before the handoff, so there's really no chance to get too far. And that is what Alcoa will do now. They'll hand the ball up the middle to Jacquez Tyson. Tyson with a few yards on the carry. Now the clock is winding down. And I'm not sure, maybe maybe time for one more one more play, but I don't think they'll do uh, that'll probably be it for them in this first half. Yeah, Alcoa's gonna let this go down as far as they can. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna come to the line here and just probably just run this play out, whether take a knee or just a quick handoff. Hand off to Tyson again, and Tyson will be stopped quickly by the Devil defense, and now that'll be your score at halftime as the clock expires. Alcoa 27, Greenville 0, and we'll be back to bring you the second half.
Seek shelter immediately. Should you choose to face the tornadoes, prepare for tremendous damage, absolute destruction, and complete devastation. <laughs>
so far in tonight's ball game. Had, a, I believe, one first down in the last drive, but we're able to get out of it, and they have done a really good job of moving the football down the field. This time, Peyton Wall drops back, rolls over to the left-hand side, and fires the ball to Mustafa Anthony. Anthony able to get it and get the first down. Yes, it was a really good pass. He had a lot of um, open space there to get some extra time. Looked like Wilder, though, was having number 45 for Greenville, was bearing down on him, so he got the ball away in time. But if he'd held it too much longer, we'd probably have been looking at a sack. Well, now Alcoa with the ball on the 38-yard line as they are driving, driving down the field. Now in the... High formation, Peyton Wall drops back, fakes the handoff and fires it to Malik Love. Malik Love catches it around the 10-yard line, and Malik Love with a brilliant catch down the field, and that'll move Alcoa down to the eight. That was a beautiful pass right there to Love, and he just laid, the quarterback just laid it out there for him, and he just waited for it. He came right up to him, and he had a couple defenders on him, but um, Greenville just didn't get to him. Well, Alcoa looking to go up by two touchdowns now, trying to extend this lead, and, and that's something you really want to do against a team like this. Greenville, a very good ball club. Um, last year, we able to defeat Alcoa handedly at, at Greenville, and I'm sure Alcoa is looking to, to right the ship and, and, and change things up this year. Oh, most definitely, Heath. And they, um, just last year, Alcoa committed three turnovers, and in the span of that, Greenville jumped on them quickly. So Alcoa's got a lot to prove for this game tonight. Well, they hand the ball up the middle to Malik Love. Malik Love will get a few yards on the carry, and it'll now be second and eight, and they're just going to let the clock run, down, run out. So that'll be the end of your first quarter. Your score after one, Alcoa seven, Greenville zero. We have a really good ball game going here, Heath, and Alcoa again driving the ball here at the end of the first quarter. We'll be heading the other way towards the Alcoa Gymnasium here, and Alcoa looks like they, if they can continue what they're doing to be able to go up by 14, with Greenville they're definitely 
going to have to watch because Greenville will strike quickly and fast. So Alcoa definitely cannot get comfortable. Certainly not. Alcoa did a great job that first time on defense, but Greenville didn't look too bad. Just a couple of good stops from Alcoa, but a very close as that fourth down and inches. Uh, they were able to hold hold them up and able to get the ball back, but Greenville, a very good ball club. First play of their offensive drive looked kind of like the very first play of Alcoa's as they drop back and fire the ball down the field and make a big play on, in the passing game, but then after that, Alca Alcoa able to regather themselves and, and able to make some big stops and get the ball back, but a very good football team, and Alcoa just has to uh, stay on the ga gas and keep going. Yes, they do. The Greenville was passing, and the quarterback's two for two. He's doing extremely well. Just looked like they were going to try to rely on getting that to open up the running game, and Alcoa just stiffened up on the th four runs that Greenville tried there. Well, the running game is such a big part last year of Greenville's success. Greenville again defeating Alcoa last year in a big game. And we're able to defeat Alcoa at Burley Stadium in Greenville 42-14. to The quarterback for tonight's ball game was one of the big playmakers last year for the Devils, Tanner Stewart. Stewart had 27 rushes for 180 yards and three touchdowns. So a very the running game was very big for Greenville last year, and I'm sure that was something that Alcoa looked to fix this offseason as they prepared for Greenville. Oh, yes, definitely. And Tanner Stewart is an excellent ball player as Alcoa just scores on that with number 12, Ezekiel Coco running in on a two-yard run for that one. Well, that'll be two touchdowns now for the Tornadoes, and now they will take the lead out after this extra point. They will extend their lead, excuse me, to 42-0 to zero with 11-17 left in the second quarter. 14-0, to zero, excuse me. <laughs> I got carried away. I was wondering about that. Valcoa lining up here, getting ready for the extra point. Oh, he's going to, no. And he will miss the extra point. And so now your score will be 13 to zero. And that could be a very dangerous part right there with him missing that extra point. But hold, we do have a flag on the play here. Not sure what they're going to call, but missing that extra point in especially a team like Greenville itself, you, that's not something you want to do and leave that one point sitting out there as um, watching some of the high school games last week, Austin East found out about. Personal foul, Heath, called on Greenville. Not sure if that was. And this Alcoa team is not letting up as they continue to leave their first string in so far in tonight's game. I've moved a couple people in and out, but so far still the starting offense in. We'll see if they make a few more changes later on. But Alcoa driving the football 14 yards to go from the end zone. And just a good job so far tonight, as Alcoa has done a great job on both sides of the football. Yes, they have, and probably going to keep the main part of the first unit in, probably at least until they score here. If they go ahead and get the ball in, and then the rest of the half or quarter, they'll probably go ahead and finish up with their um, second units. But Alcoa has just dominated this game from start to finish. Came out with first play was a, a long pass that they got down and drove it in and basically have just put the brakes on Greenville here. The Green Devils again, an excellent football team playing um, up in their district, a two-time state champion as well. And Alcoa is just playing very inspired again, probably definitely motivated by last year's game. And so far around high school football, it seems to be the week of shutouts as we have several 
to comment on so far tonight. Alcoa again leading Greenville 42 to 0. William Blunt leading Heritage 10 to 0. Greenback leading Cloudland 41 to 0. And Mount Juliet leading TKA 7 to 0. So uh, around the league, a lot of shutouts tonight in high school football. It's like a good night for it and definitely great weather for it anyway, Heath. It looks like Alcoa was stopped there. Tyson only got about a yard on that last play. Uh, looks like they're probably going to bring in, yes, number 96. They're bringing in their field goal kicker. Uh, going to give him a little bit of work here and see if he can make this. Looks like it's going to be about a 28-yard field goal here. Well, Austin Wall is back to kick. Missed an extra point earlier, but besides that, has been solid tonight in the ball game. His first field goal of the night. Snap is back. A good hold, it looks like. The kick is up. And he will miss it a little bit to the left. No good. Your score still 42-0 Alcoa with 10.54 left in the fourth. Unable to really get a good leg behind that one, unfortunately, for Wallace. And Coach Rankin is not happy. Well, looking at the uh, kick there, and as a play, you saw Greenville's interior lineman get through there. And as a kicker, you're probably going to see him panic a little bit when he sees that rush. And Greenville's got some pretty big boys, so they were bearing down on him pretty quickly. So he tried to get that kick out of there fast and just took it. Well, sometimes that happens to kickers. and. Uh, they're going to mess up every once in a while, too. So hopefully that will be just be something Wallace can work on this week and, and work on improving, and we'll see if he can, he can correct that coming into next week. And it looks like Greenville has started to put some of their backups in the ballgame tonight. Um, in now for Greenville at quarterback is number 12, Zach Fincham, the 5'10 junior quarterback. Yes, and that pass was just led his receiver a little bit too, Heath, so it looked like he would be second and ten. But giving him a little bit more experience is definitely going to want him next year. A good pass right there, though. A great pass and a great read as he was able to fire that ball before he uh, made his cut and turned around. And a good throw and a good catch that time by number 23, Andrew Houston. Yes, it was. It was a little low. He got down on it was able to make a good catch on it and brings up third and three now. Well, Fincham in the shotgun with two receivers to the left and two to the right. He will move Quan Wilson over to the right-hand side now, and he will hand the ball up to Wilson. Wilson up the middle to the left-hand side, tries to get through the hole, and he will gain a couple, and it'll now be fourth and short. Yeah, looking at the way the line judge was coming up on that, it looks like it's going to be a measurement type, type deal. No, the referees are going to go ahead and say it's fourth down. So, Fincham gets the snap, and he will keep it himself. He will get the first down and a yard or two more. Now first down for the Devils and a good run by Fincham. Yes, it was. There's been a couple of plays in this drive, too, here, where Fincham tried to go to his feet to get the snap and um, just a little bit of um, – difference probably between the quarterbacks and the center here but he's he's done extremely well and be able to get the ball and get it off in time before Alcoa's rush can get to him this time he turns and fires and the pass is complete and a good job of trying to escape the defense but he happens to step out of bounds and a, but a great catch that time by number 11 Malcolm Blair yes it was and he held that line it looked like he was going to try to tiptoe down but just got his feet on that line And Greenville with a lot of talent coming back next year. A lot of the players we're seeing right now, seeing some juniors make some big plays right now. So definitely a good future for them knowing that they have those players coming back. That pass was incomplete by Fincham. was intended for number two, Hayes Colbreth, and it'll now be third down. Yes, and definitely looks like um, with their new quarterback in here as well that – Stewart, again, is an excellent quarterback, and they've still got good hands coming back for him next year as well with this young quarterback. A 
Flip trips to the right, but then send Colbert in motion and then pitch it up the middle that time, and he will go nowhere. A great job from Coco on the tackle, and the ball was handed off to number 23 of Greenville, Andrew Houston. Yeah, and it looks like he lost about half a yard, maybe a yard, and it looks like Heath that Greenville is sending in the punting unit. Well, fourth and six with 6.43 left in the ball game. And we will see if Alcoa will start to bring in that second squad to end tonight's game. Back to receive for Alcoa is the lone man this time, Malik Love. Clark gets the snap and will punt it. A short punt that time. It does not go very far. And it'll go out of bounds at the 48-yard line. And Alcoa's football now, which may be the last drive and the last possession of the ball game. Yes, if Alcoa decides just to run the ball and just grind it down a few yards at a time, they're going to be able to run this clock out. The punt right there by the Greenville punter, looked like he just shanked it and caught off the end of his foot and just kind of went straight basically for the Alcoa bench. Well, Alcoa has brought in some of their backups now in their second string. Tyson's still in the ball game, but at quarterback now is number 18, the freshman, Mitchell McClurg. To the right of McClurg is Tyson, and to the left is Birchfield with one receiver to the left and one to the right. McClurg fakes the handoff, and he will take it himself, and he will get a gain of three yards. It'll now be second and seven. Yes, a good run. It looked like he got his foot tangled up with number 73, one of his his tackle, and kind of brought him down because he was falling before the Greenville defender was able to get on him. Now in the I formation with Birchfield at fullback, Tyson at running back, and the tight end to the left-hand side of the line from McClurg. He'll draw back, and he will hand the ball off to Tyson. Tyson will gain a few, and it'll now be third down and six. A good power run by Tyson on that play. Um, again, they're just keeping the clock running, running plays in and out, players in and out just to keep that clock running and um, bring, bring this game on down with about 4.30 left. Now the offense comes up to the line and they're in the eye formation again. McClurg under center. Gets the snap and will hand off to the left side to Tyson. Tyson will break through the hole, get a first down, and will gain a few more, breaks a few tackles, and finally is brought down by a host of Devils, and it'll be a first down for Alcoa. Yes, again, Tyson and the power and the speed that he's got was able to break through the initial contact, got a 16-yard gain on that play, and moved the chains for Alcoa. And Jacquez has had a really good night tonight, a couple of touchdowns and some really good yardage and runs during this game. Well, McClurg has an easy job coming in uh, to finish off this ball game. All he has to do is turn and just hand off to the plethora of Alcoa running backs and let them uh, find the holes and make the plays. But McClurg looks to be a very good quarterback, a 6'2 freshman, so definitely adds some height to the quarterback position. Uh, fumbled snap this time, though, and it was recovered by Sean Love of Alcoa, and Love will make something of it. He will bounce all the way to the right side, get over to the right-hand sideline, make some defenders miss as they're unable to catch him and a first down for Alcoa and a great run by the junior running back. Yes, it was and very uh, good play by Love as well to see that McClurg had dropped the football and was turning to pick it up and he just ran over as he was coming through there, just scooped the ball up himself and ran around, dodged a couple of Green Devils on the end there and was able to get about 15 yards on that play. Well, Alcoa comes up to the line again, and they will continue with the I formation this time as they are going back to it. Well, Kirk with the snap, and he'll hand it off to Love up the middle, and Love will be stopped that time after a few. A good job by the line and the defense of the Devils that time to prevent a big gain from Love. It'll now be second and eight. 
And a good, powerful run by Love. Uh, again, Greenville defenders uh, all over him. It took a, a host of the Green Devils to bring him down as he continued to drive his legs forward to get a little bit extra on that play. Looks like we're under two minutes now as well as Alcoa just continues to run the ball to keep the clock moving. Well, this time McClure tries to keep it himself, and he will be blasted as he is will not get back, I believe, to the line of scrimmage. He may lose a yard on the carry, and now third down. It looked like Greenville was waiting on that, and he, like you said, probably didn't even get back to the line on that because they hit him hard, letting him know that they, even though the under two minutes and winding down, that they're still going to play. Also, just a reminder here, too, that uh, next, Thursday, next week's game with Kingston, is on um, it's on the uh, 28th um, I believe that's a Friday night um, and Alcoa will be playing Kingston at home and uh, for Greenville next week Greenville will be playing West Green at home next week as well and McClurg takes a knee right there on that play we'll bring up fourth down and it looks like they're just going to let the clock continue to wind down. And a good ball game tonight from Alcoa and a great job of uh, just, again, as we've stated so much in tonight's game, both sides a good job defensively. We've seen a lot of improvement tonight on the defensive side of the ball. And Alcoa really came to play tonight. And hopefully the Devils will be able to bounce back next week as they face West Green. But that will be your final as the clock is expiring with 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So your final score here at Goddard Field, Alcoa 42, Greenville 0. Heath Dunkel alongside Scott Dunkel saying thank you for listening. So long, good night, and yes, that just happened.